a new term I coined and started an idea I want to discuss with you. I started discussing the concept of Swadeshi Muslims. Swadeshi means I am a Muslim, I am practicing Islam, but I believe this is my Swadesh. And this is my ancestors, this is my land, uh, and uh, these, are, these Hindus are my brothers, and we were converted, we are Muslims. So I pray to Allah as per Islam, but I am in Sanskriti wise, I am in, uh, integrated. And I'm finding a lot of well-educated Muslims interested in this. Especially I'm finding women who are professionals, who've had it with triple talaq, all that polygamy business, they're very interested in this. So I want to encourage this. So I started saying, okay, let's create this uh, Swadeshi Muslims movement. We'll invite people who want to be Swadeshi Muslims. Swadeshi Muslims themselves are working with me to develop a charter. Nothing in the Quran, according to what, I, what I'm discussing, these people are telling me, nothing in the Quran requires you have to go to a mosque because it is between you and Allah. You can pray at home. In fact, one person even coined the term Mullah Dham. He said Mullah Dham comes after, after the Quran came. It was a way to get power and issue fatwas and get power. And since a lot of the uh, ordinary Muslims are not educated and did not know enough, so they depend on the mullah to give them guidance and the mullah gets control over their brain. So he becomes a center of power and then he's a mischief maker because he's a political middleman. And a lot of them also told me that, for instance, beef eating is not something required in the, in the Quran. In fact, the Arabs don't have cows. They, it's, a, it's a tropical animal. Mm -hmm. Cow does not exist in the desert. Mm -hmm. they, if they, when they were eating, they were eating goat or camel, but not cow. So to say that uh, banning beef, eating, beef would be uh, against Islam is also wrong because it is not against Islam. So like this, and I've even got uh, many discussions, videotape where people are saying that Ram Mandir should be built. Because mosque can be relocated. It is, mosque is just a meeting hall. It is not a sacred site. Mm. What, you do not need to go to a mosque. You are just praying to the Kaaba, meeting in a place, that's all. But you can meet in any place. There is nothing special. There is no Pran Patrishta for a mosque. So these are logical arguments. When I present them with open-minded, logical, educated type of Muslims, especially women, but men also, especially young people, I find that a lot of them are quite interested. But they are scared to come out. So I, I want to facilitate. The again, I'm saying you should leave, but we will facilitate. What is your thought on this? You see, the Indian Muslims were always Swadeshi Muslims. Mm. Good. The political interests have time and again tried to make them go astray from the mainstream. Mm. And they had upper hand. But always there was a reaction and this mass of Muslims again came back to mainstream. That has happened during the time of Akbar. Again, Aurangzeb tried to reverse that. Again, it was defeated. After 1857, the Wahhabi influence, Muslim League, etc., etc., they played on that and created Pakistan. But now the Muslims of Bharat, they have realized and there is a reverse current again. And uh, always whatever is beneficial for this country, we will lend every help. That thing is going on. Yes. Some years back, six years back, signatures of about 10 lakh Muslims were presented, presented to the President of India that cow slaughter should be banned by a central Mm. In Ayodhya, Ram Mandir should be constructed. Mm. 370 should be abolished right. and Kashmir should be made, including Ajat, so called Ajat Kashmir, right. <laughs> the integral part of our country. Right. Like that, those demands, nine demands, 10,000 Muslims signatories were there and they had the courage to come out and present it to the President of India. Who was the President at that time? Pranavda. Oh, mm. okay, okay. <laughs> That's very good. I find that uh, a large part of the problem is this colonization of Muslims by 
Arabs and Iranians. Mm. Like we call, we, we think British colonization, mm. Mm. that is one colonization. Mm. But even before that, there was Islamic invaders colonization. We have to acknowledge that also. Because Islam is one thing, but Arabization is something different. In fact, Islamic scholars are telling me that Arabization is a problem. Mm. You, that is the Wahhabi thing. Nothing in Islam says, in the original Quran says that you got to imitate the Arabs. Mm -hmm. Nothing says that. There. That you got to be like them, dress like them and talk like them and uh, think they are sweet, superior. This happened because invaders present themselves as superior. Mm. And the colonized people are those who believe this, mm. that their own inferiority. Mm. And I am better off being like them. Mm. So those who are imitating the Europeans are colonized in one way. But you know, in our country, when they talk about decolonization, mm. they only talk about European decolonization. And I keep reminding that decolonization from the Arab and Iranian colonial influence is also very important. Yes. Especially in North India, it's a very big thing. Yes. So, this is called Ashrafization because mm. they, they have a caste system. Mm. Ashraf mm. are those who are either dire direct descendants of the uh, mm. prophet or they are sheikhs mm. or they are Pathans or mm. they are Turks, something like that. So, the people who came from foreign, DNA wise is a very tiny percent. Mm. They are calling the Ashraf mm. and the people who are native who got converted are called Ajlaf. Mm. And the fashion is to Ashrafize so that you are considered superior. Mm. Like the fashion of uh, becoming more westernized. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is Ashrafization. Mm. Not a problem that Islam, mm. but a problem of Ashrafization. Mm. They are two separate issues. Mm. So if we can decolonize, de Ashrafize, we have Sudeshi Muslims. Mm. And then we can deal with them, each other, and work out how to respect and coexist. So, what do you think of this that, you know, uh, an important thing to expose is the Ashraf, Ashraf caste system. Lot of these very famous uh, uh, people in Islam who are representing them and trying to be power brokers, they are call, they're calling themselves Ashraf. <laughs> and looking down upon the native yes. Indian who is a Muslim. Yes. You see, for the nature of the people who are born and brought up in this country, the colonization is a very unnatural influence, though it is strong for a period of time, it is unnatural. And ultimately, they get disillusioned, they get uncomfortable, and then they react. Mm. Time and again it happens, and it has started now. And I think it is finally the final stage of that reaction. Mm. So, um, it will happen. Mm. We should let Muslims do it. Mm. There are huge mass of Muslims who, inside their minds, they are thinking against this. Yes. They are not yet. Uh, they are afraid of something. They are not coming out openly. They are not coming out openly. Uh -huh. But they will come out openly. Yes. Situation is being so. And uh, so, therefore, all these signs indicate that now they will act. Mm. We should facilitate. Yes. We should with open arms welcome them. Yes. We also should not say that now you are Muslims, you cannot come with us. Right. That we should not say. That's correct. So, uh, there are so many religions, so many modes of worship in Bharat. Two more mo modes Why not? which came from outside. Why right. not? Right. I, I'm building this idea of Swadeshi Muslims, Swadeshi Christians also. Exactly. Most important thing is we have to make the Hindus Swadeshi. We have to create Hindus Videshi because a lot of Hindus have become Videshi. This was the exact thing in the minds of all our forefathers who yes. fought for freedom. Yes. Whatever their expression, and at times it had gone astray and caused very, uh, caused very dire consequences, but their intention was this. Yes. The India they foresaw, independent India, was like this, where whatever be your worship, your culture is one, your ancestors are one, right. and your motherland is one. Right. Right. That is what we call Hindu. Right. 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 So our constitution is also like that. Right. Because the mindset was this. Yeah. It is still that. See, we can also uh, work with some serious Swadeshi Muslim intellectuals and discuss things like, you know, Dharma, we have a Jati Dharma. Mm. There is a Jati Dharma, there is a certain way of life, certain practices that Muslims have. And we also have the concept of Ishta Devata. So someone could say his Ishta Devata is Jesus or someone could say his Ishta Devata is Allah. 
but ishta devta means he cannot say that other ishta devtas have to be uh, mm. uh, uh, hit back he has to say mutual respect mm. my like for instance in my case my ishta devta is uh, shiva but i respect this one that one that one i have no problem it has to be mutual respect for mm. each other that is the hindu way that is the hindu way hallmark is accepting respecting and celebrating diversity yes that is hindu yes because not only unity in diversity diversity of unity that is correct all they, they are expression of unity yes they are unity themselves so the we one should accept each other the one respect in the one the oneness includes the manyness in within it yes. because the manyness does not come from somewhere else come from it is from within it the is one from within. so the diversity in the unity hmm. is also there also there so that is the exact thing that a hindu requires to follow yes and hindus when they follow it wholeheartedly everything else will change automatically hindus need not do anything for that so that is how we are building hindus so an interesting thing is that now in other parts of the world muslims having problems with everybody so everybody is trying to figure out way what to do some are having clash of civilizations some are having negotiation so in us there is a movement of uh, muslims who are working with jews and christians to kind of create a harmony among the abrahamic religions and there is also a movement called uh, islamic reformation they want to reform islam so they are saying that there are uh, clauses within the quran that you can reinterpret for a different uh, context so just because muhammad had four wives doesn't mean today we need to have four wives and things like that there are muslims saying it openly and they are defying the fatwas and all that because they think that is an obsolete institution so i am interested in participating from a swadeshi muslim point of view bringing swadeshi muslims into contact with this global movement of muslims who want to get rid of these ideas of kafir jihad darul islam and let muslims respect the nation they are in so this is a movement i i last year i had an interaction two or three times with some 60 to 100 muslim intellectuals the trend of their thinking was exactly this mm. they said okay we are muslims but why not uh, respect this is our motherland mm. in our janaza if there is not a handful of soil from our motherland we cannot get jannat that is our custom so why deny us there were three or four muslims who asked me why don't you declare that all muslims of bharati origin are hindus i said i am saying it <laughs> yes you have to say you it. have to declare ha uh, i cannot declare it. you have to declare it. yeah that is what i said so this trend is definitely has come up and is growing and we'll help in all the way we can good very good